Uh, welcome back to the channel in uh, the next video on the uh, Robert E. Lee uh, model by Lindbergh and I uh, hope everybody had a chance to uh, catch up on the first video if you were interested in finding out just a little bit information on the model itself and um, a little bit why I built it. Uh, in this video we'll be taking a look on the, uh, the problems with putting the kit together and uh, getting it to come out halfway decent and uh, presentable. Um, now even way back, back in the 60s and 70s when I was just a kid, uh, you know, more or less in the 70s, uh, when I start building models and stuff, uh, uh, Lindbergh was always kind of like, you know, it wasn't one of your really upper class model companies. I mean, back then they might have been popular, but, uh, you know, they still, it was, it was lower quality kit, poor, poor quality, and not like real excessive detail. Um, different things like that, but uh, you know, and nowadays uh, with some of the model companies, and especially like Bandai and Mobius, with some of the detail they put in their models, uh, it makes this stuff look like it's uh, antique and ancient the way it's uh, molded and stuff. So so simple and basic and everything. So um, Lindbergh, as far as I remember, way back then, if I did build any of their kits, uh, they were known for a lot of flash, not only on the trees but on the parts themselves and um just a lot of a lot of trimming and sanding and filing and everything and this kit's not any different so uh first off we're gonna start with some supplies which i feel y you have to use if you're gonna build this right okay so first we're gonna start with our uh our glues okay um i do i do i do use several types of glues for different applications to me at the thin it's it's okay for putting like this piece of plastic to that piece of plastic you know it's got the capillary action it's uh it's it's decent glue you don't want to use it on this um in fact if you ever do anything where you have to add uh your own uh strip styrene or sheet styrene throw this out it uh it doesn't have the strength the holding strength um, I can break stuff apart at the joints with this glue. Um, it's not meant for stuff like Plastruct and Evergreen, even though it might seem like it's a similar type because it's a liquid. It's not meant for stuff like that. So toss it. That's probably my least favorite. I'll even test testers tube glue over, uh, over this stuff. To me, uh, the, uh, the extra thick stuff, and the orange cap um, I do like this for uh, you know say little small parts like the flag posts and stuff like that um, you know the, the, the lifeboats different things uh, 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 you know it, it's got its applications I do use it quite a bit you know putting these little little crown t tips on top of the uh, smokestacks and stuff you know this is nice it gives you a little bit extra time to work work with it before it finally sets up um, but it's not made for like plastruct and evergreen styrene uh, stuff like that um, Like say if you want to make brackets for holding LEDs down or if you have to do some scratch building Add in uh, add in filler strips of styrene. It's it's not made for that type of stuff You don't want to use it on this model even if it's just gluing the model parts together um, it, It's it's it, it doesn't have the holding part part uh, power uh, and uh, and your model will come apart before you get it finished. It'll start it'll start coming apart at the seams even if it's dry, and sits for a couple days. This is what you want to use on this entire kit, basically for all your all your big your hall, your different decks, all your walls and stuff. Um, this this stuff I guarantee you uh, put this on glue two joints together use it, it does it does this work by capillary action it literally melts the plastic I'm, I'm talking literally if you press hard you're gonna squish plastic liquid out of the seam not the glue it's gonna be soft plastic liquid that that oozes out from the seam that's how that's how soft and, and quick this stuff attacks the plastic and um, and bonds it together so this is what you want to use especially if you're using the plastic and evergreen styrene, uh, the different shapes, the round tubing, the, the strip styrene, sheet styrene, stuff like that. This stuff, you could literally try to pull apart the seam and it'll break 
everywhere else but the seam that you glued together. Um, I use this heavily on this particular model. I used about three quarters of one of these bottles and stuff. I usually keep about five of these bottles on hand at any given time. So um, I never have to worry about running out. Well, I usually don't when I get down to about two bottles. I usually re re restock and stuff. So um, I get most of my uh, adhesives and uh, even a lot of paints nowadays from Hobby Link. Not Hobby Link Japan, just Hobby Link here in the States. I believe down, they're down in Georgia. And um, no matter when you go go on their website, it seems like everything's always on sale, like, you know, 15, 20, 25, 30% off, I mean, even model kits and stuff. They got ridiculously low prices. I was just talking to William from uh, Space Dock Modeling last night, and uh, he asked me where I get um, Tamiya paints and stuff, because they're pr quite pricey. And um, they carried a small th one-third ounce jars and the three-quarter ounce jars. I just ordered some for Mike Katinga. The third ounce jars they sell for two bucks a piece. The three quarter ounce jars of um, the Tamiya, um, like the XF uh, flat acrylic colors, they sell for two seventy a piece, and those are those are pretty good size three quarter ounce jars and stuff. So, um, but anyway, this is the glue you want to use for this particular model. Um, if you don't, it's up to you. But I'm telling you, you're gonna want to. Um, you're gonna want to have this is just a sample. It's not necessarily the thick. This is pretty thick stuff. But um, you're going to want to have, have yourself some sheet styrene. It comes in bigger sheets than this. Um, I buy, sometimes I'll buy, you know, separate packages of uh, a certain, certain size, thickness, or a certain shape or something. But most times I get what they call the um, odds and ends bags. I believe they're about a pound of plastic. You get little pieces of uh, round uh, styrene tubing, solid uh, round tubing, uh, styrene uh, 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 square tubing. Um, solid square pieces like strip styrene. You get sheet styrene. There are uh, probably pieces. Uh, I would say about six inches by about maybe um, ten or ten, ten, ten inches or so big. Um, they're good size stuff. I mean, you get a bag of their um, ads and ends bag, and and you can get it. Uh, I think Hobby Link's got it listed at uh, seven fifty a bag or something, which is pretty cheap. Uh, most hobby stores you can find it for about um anywhere from eight eight and a half to like 8.95 for this bag it's called odds and ends and every bag is different it's not every bag doesn't have the same stuff in it you know it's it's like uh scrap pieces maybe when they do cutoffs off the machine when they when they make the big uh you know the the full length piece and stuff they they, they cut the ends off and they're big enough to put in a bag and sell and uh i'll tell you what you can pick up a bag of that stuff and actually scratch build a model out of it you get so many different shapes and and uh sizes and things you know some bags might have uh, some sheet styrene that's scribed that you can use for siding or, or it looks like it's corrugated. You can use for roofing like if you're in the model trains or structures or something like that. So um, it's well worth uh, the, the seven and a half, eight bucks, whatever you find it for and stuff. Because um, you could do just about if you got to do little, you know, filling in gaps like I did in here. Uh, uh, if you got to do like a star store like me and... Uh, uh, a couple other guys did the Ravel build and play Star Destroyer and filled in those landing flaps on the bottom that they, that they used for a stand and everything. We used a strip styrene instead of putty. Um, but um, that's what I, I, I do. I, I, I usually buy a couple of those uh, every year and have them on hand and stuff. You know, you can you get the little tube, you can make your little uh, um, tubes for your uh, LEDs for like putting your fiber optic strands in and stuff so you can, you know, you can get them to light and everything real nice like that stuff. Um, Tulip. For a lot of you people that might not know, Tulip is uh, actually a uh, product they sell in the craft departments at Walmarts and, and, and craft stores. It's actually a uh, acrylic paint that you can use on uh, fabric and everything. It, it'll come up. It's a permanent and it's like it, it gives it like a textured effect and stuff. You know, you can write your name on a t-shirt or something and throw it in a wash machine and it's going to be there for a long time. comes in all different colors. Normally I use black. A lot of other guys use black. We use it sometimes for filling gaps in that. A lot of times for light blocking, like if you got an LED and you don't want the LED to shine in a different area because you got other stuff there, uh, you put a little uh, coating of this over the LED, and when it, you know when it dries, you got uh, the LEDs only shining in the area that you want it to, and everything and stuff. So I use a lot of black for this, for for that purpose. I also use the white. Um, I used it a lot of this to fill in different big gaps and everything that maybe were um, not big enough to get a piece of sheet styrene. Uh, I use sheet styrene on this model from anywhere from 10 thousandths to a 30 second thick. 
Um, and believe me, there's, there's gaps that were bigger than that, but, uh, I filled a lot of areas in with the white tulip and stuff. It comes in handy. Being the model's predominantly white, you can fill in gap, um, work it, work it down, clean off the excess, and, uh, you don't really have to go back over and paint it and everything, so it blends right in. So, that can that's gonna be something you need. Another thing I use, I don't use Tamiya tape. I use Scotch Blue tape for normal masking and stuff, the one inch wide stuff. But for my small masking, I use automotive pin striping. Two reasons: it's about half the price of Tamiya tape, the same thickness. And with this, I don't get no um, paint bleed uh, under the tape. I can uh, I can go up and back over this. If I lay this on a piece of plastic, I can take a brush and go up and down over the edge of the tape, and the paint won't work its way under the tape at all. Uh, it sticks very well. It's uh, vinyl. It's not uh, you know papery tape product where you, you got a hard time conforming it around curves and uh, and uh, different uh, you, you know um, um, contours and stuff. This stuff since it's plastic or vinyl, it'll 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 conform to every curve. You can take and and go around, uh, 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 you know, if you want to make a curly cue or something, uh, you can do it much easier with this. And like I said, it's a lot cheaper. Um, another another reason, uh, I used to use this stuff religiously back in the 80s and stuff. I used to do a lot of pinstriping and that. And um, people would ask, ask me to get like a factory stripe like they do from the factory. A lot of times I got that little double stripe, stripe with the thin one and the thicker one. Um, I could take from the front of the back of the car and eyeball a straight line without any wiggles or, or up and down, you know, miss, miss, misalignment or anything. Um, it's just something that comes in natural and stuff. So, um, that's another reason why I use this stuff. Cause if it sticks to the car, once it's down, it's hard to peel off too, especially on a, on a warm day when you do it in about the seventies or the low eighties, when the sun is beating down, this stuff comes, becomes basically permanent. So um but anyway that's what i use i use that on my haul which i'll show you in a second here um other thing for this model i uh have a, have have yourself a lot of these um you need these because you can kind of control the pressure that it puts between on, on the plastic where the squeeze ones that are like like a regular clamp i call them like a, like a spring clamp those you clamp them down and it might squeeze too hard and make the part pop pop out or you know yeah, you might get an uneven uh a seam or something like that um so I, I i got about oh probably about 20 of these laying around they're the small little small adjustable ones and all that and um like i said you can you you, you just close it with the trigger but you can control how much pressure you're putting on a model so you don't overdo it and stuff especially when it comes to areas like this back here we got these little posts that you got to squeeze everything together and you don't want them to pop back out or, or bend or crack on you or nothing like that. These do the trick. So, um, we're not going to make this real long video. Like I said, I'm trying to keep them short, but get right to the point. So, um, as far as the build of this model, first thing I did was, um, uh, as you guys could see, I got a nice, pretty real nice straight water line painted on there and all that and like i said i'm experienced with that tape i used to pinstripe cars so it pretty much comes natural um i did make myself i do have since i'm a machinist i have a height gauge and um it just it's just basically got a little sharpened steel tip on it that puts a little scribe so i did put myself a scribe mark where i wanted it once i figured out where it's where the right place it should go and um Rather than painting the hull white and then trying to tape everything off regular and uh, paint red stripe on there, what I did was I painted the entire hull red. And then uh, I laid down my uh, pinstripe and tape where I wanted my waterline to be. And I painted every, all, and I painted all the white over that. Um, uh, before I did that, though, um, I did glue the, uh, the wing deck down to the hull. Um... That way I wouldn't have to worry about messing up none of the paint job down there and stuff. So, um, on the hull itself, I did do a gloss coat on there. As um, the hull part on a boat back in this time period, um, um, I'm not you know for sure, but I'm imagining the boat hull, since it doesn't have any really uh, scribe lines in it, it was probably a steel hull. And everything up above that, all the decks and everything, the, uh, the, 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 the different cabin levels and stuff. I'm um, probably figuring that most of that was probably all wooden structure and stuff. So 
that's the route I took, and being that that sits in the water, they probably had some kind of, if it was wood, they probably had some kind of um, waterproofing, you know, coat over it and everything to keep it from getting waterlogged and stuff. So that's the route I took, and then once I was done with all the paint and got the, uh, the main deck glued down, then I pulled that pinstripe tape off of there, and uh, that that's what it gave me. That tape is a sixteenth of an inch wide and all that. And uh, actually, in the directions, they call out the paint a one sixteenth wide wide water lane stripe on the hall um it came out pretty much the same all the way around so that's so much for that as far as the uh a lot of delicate stuff on here a lot of parts on this kit too um as far as the model itself uh, pretty much you're going to want to build it up level one level at a time. You can start with this level here. Um, like I said, I drilled out these windows. Um, I, uh, first thing I assembled was down here. There's some uh, a lower lower level with some walls that go around there and all that. I started out with those, made sure they were in the right place. Um, I dry fitted everything. It's really not a big deal because the stuff's not going to fit proper anyway. Um, I started with all this back area and then I worked my way around to all this here and the upper walls here this this part of the deck here is, is separate from everything else too so I worked my way building all this up um, this back wall here and the stern the shape of that wasn't the same shape as your main deck so uh, um, pretty much Everything back here, there's little locating like tabs that stick up off the deck parts and then the walls fit, you know, up against them, you know, kind of like building a, uh, it's not, not so much like a model railroad model kit, but like uh, if you ever did like model railroad buildings or nothing, it's kind of like little tabs that stick up in the outer walls bump like up against them. That's the way you locate stuff. That's how this model was uh, engineered, designed, whatever. Um, but this part wasn't the, the same shape as this turn wall was. So, um, what I did was, uh, you know, before I even put this deck on, I built all this. Then, uh, then I went ahead, I built these front walls. The inner wall, which you can't, can't get in there and see, this whole inner wall from one side to the other was all discarded from the part. Because, uh, if you notice the ship, it's curved up and back, it's arched lengthwise. And it's also arched from one side of the ship to the other, kind of like... Kind of like a arch going up and down, up in the center, down towards the sides. Um, with those walls, the way they were made, they weren't the same shape as this, so you would have had a lot of daylight up there. Uh, and in order to, if, if none of that fit right, a lot of the stuff back here wasn't fitting right. So I pretty much scratch built all this from the piece all the way across to the other side. Um, that's where all your sheet styrene comes in handy. Um, then I proceeded along, assembled all this stuff. Pretty much none of that stuff was any issues. Um, a lot of the stuff in there you can't see. There's like a boiler assembly. It's just two, a two-piece assembly, a back, a back plate in the front. Um, there was a lot of seam filling on there. Is there was some the, the parts weren't really warped. They were almost like uh, like warped in the mold. And when they dried, they got even worse and stuff. So you had some pretty good, almost eighth of an inch to the 3 16th inch of, a ga of gaps in there and not that you see them but I wanted them to be filled in and uh, you know where there was no gaps and everything just for my well-being and stuff so um, uh, I left these supports up here off till last but I did I did all this here the, the, the different uh, catwalks and stuff like that that little structure down there I got all that done and then I went uh, to glue down this deck. Now these parts, like I said, those are separate. It's almost like a wheel well on a car would be. Um, this has to locate in a certain area in order for all of this back here to fit properly. Um, and also these two raised areas here, there's a lip on this wheel, on this, on this housing that fits between them. You don't have much room to shift it. That locates in a certain area. If you if if you're gonna have a big gap, being that it's all assembled, it's hard to show. Gonna have a big a gap about a sixteenth inch 
maybe even close to an eighth inch um, where the, the, the wall piece doesn't put up against that. And if you try to move this, everything in the front's going to be thrown off. This whole deck here is going to be thrown off. The upper deck, everything is going to be thrown off. So you kind of got to put that, deal with the gaps. That's another reason you need the sheet styrene um, to fill in those gaps. Uh, I use Tula to fill in all the gaps. Uh, I pretty much don't even have a pinhole light coming from in between there, where originally they started out as uh, the gaps almost as wide as this uh, um, little uh, skewer stick that I'm using and stuff. So uh, that's 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 like a lot of the main issues. It's not so much that the model's junk. It's the the parts just don't fit where they should. And even though they have locating tabs where, where the walls should sit but up against, it, it doesn't work out that way. So you're going to have a lot of gaps to fill. And like I said, if you start trying to shift something to fill in one gap, it's just going to create a misalignment when you get to here. These two decks here should line up together as far as, you know, up and down the front of them. If you start shifting stuff, you're going to have all that. Then the next thing you know your railings are going to sit all goofy crooked and stuff so um it's just a pain in the neck a real challenging model it's not for someone with little or no experience uh you know you need to have a few kits under your belt where you've actually done some made putty work or gap filling and stuff like that even if you're not lighting this model it's still going to look horrendous if you don't fill in the gaps the same way as if you were going to light it and stuff so um, that's the main trick. Um, another big problem is up here, these, uh, different decks here. Um, these cabin walls, the roofs are the correct length. These cabin walls, you had to file about an eighth of an inch off of this one and about a sixteenth of an inch off of that one. Otherwise, you're going to have about a quarter inch gap when you put the roof pieces, the roof pieces on. And basically, the way these were molded, they were molded, there is a curve to that where they got a slight slope towards the center and they slope back upward towards the front. The way they were molded, and if you would have glued them together before you assembled them onto the, onto the decking part, they would have been bent the opposite way, like raised in the middle and lower on the ends. So you had to file a little bit, each, 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 each half, the front half and the, and the back half. You could keep, see the seam there. You had to file a little bit until you got them to join just right. Test fit the roof pieces, make sure that they butted up against each other. And also, like I said, there's locating tabs on the front and back where those walls should butt up and everything so the roof and everything does fit. And it was the same with these, um, these deck pieces here and that. That was part of the filing because there's little tabs right where the inside of this front wall and there's little tab in that back wall and they should they should butt right up. If not, those are going to be in the wrong area and it's going to make this gap that, that you get in the middle even worse and everything. So there's a lot of, a lot of improperly, I would say improperly sized mold, molded parts that are molded the wrong lengths and stuff like that. And um, so it's a, there's a, there's a lot of filing, sanding, test fitting, filing, sanding, test fitting, filing, sanding, test fitting, filling in gaps. Um, there's no way around it. So that's why I'm making these videos and it didn't just jump to one video. Hey, this is Robert E. Lee without the lights. This is the Robert Lee, e. Robert e. Lee with the lighting and stuff. Hope you guys enjoy it. I wanted to go over this because recently since I bought my kit and during the time I was building it, I was getting some comments popping up from different guys. Um, that's a, the, the video when I, when I showed the kit just in the box, what, what one of my upcoming goals was going to be, there was a lot of guys that jumped on and ordered these that were going to build some themselves and everything. And I feel, um, you know, I want to share this stuff. There's a lot of guys that build models and they don't share information like this. They could have these issues, but they to themselves and they just showed a model. Boom. This is my model of Robert E. Lee. Hope you guys enjoy it. Take care. A couple of minutes. Some beauty shots if they did light it or not, which most of them, most of them don't. The couple that I did see weren't even light blocked or nothing. And there was, uh, <clears throat> there was rainbow colored windows and everything. It's like, oh boy, I got to talk to that guy. Ask him if he ever heard of light blocking. But anyway, um, uh, another thing too, 
with this kit there's little raised detail supposedly those were like skylights that um i didn't see i the, the only ones i seen where they were lit up was a model that was basically not light block and all the plastic looked like a giant light bulb um and most of the museum quality builds i just saw them where they were painted maybe a dark gray or something highlight the raised areas let you know there was something there but i didn't see none of them lit up like that there are a couple museum uh models that that did have lighting in them and stuff and i think the one i was looking at was like 2900 bucks for the model uh another 200 bucks if you wanted it lit um it was uh twice the size of this of course it was all all wood